When Bonneville was first built in the 1930s, the main powerhouse was constructed. Then in the 1970s, because of increasing energy demand, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to build the second powerhouse north of the first one. But before they could build it, the entire town of North Bonneville was relocated several miles to the west. A dam is made up of four primary parts, the spillways to allow water and fish to pass over the dam without going through the turbines, the fish passages such as the fish ladders, the navigation locks to allow passage of barges and pleasure craft up and down the river, and finally the powerhouse where gravity pushes water through turbines to generate electricity. Don and I found an expert to explain just how power is made from these dams. And what we want to know, sir, is what do you do with the water after you take the electricity out of it? Super good question. Uh, get that, you, get that, you get asked that here at Bonneville quite often. But uh, essentially a dam, like we have here in the middle of the Columbia, all we're trying to do is back up water behind it. So we have a tail race that's low, a four bay that's high, and we have what we call a net head so that the head difference gives us the energy to run turbines. So the flow of water through that net head change will give us the energy to run the turbines. So, so could we have a look around? Sure, I think we should. Shape. I think we should see and check out a turbine. Yeah. So Jim, we're looking at the inside of the dam and a cutaway of a, of a turbine? You bet. What's this big piece right here? Okay, so you've got the, the rotor here identified as item number eight. That's really a rotating electromagnet that we use to generate the, the electricity into a field, a stator field, that will go out through uh, electrical conductors out to the system. And then the, the large bracket above that is an upper bearing bracket or a thrust bearing bracket. And it supports the weight of not only this rotor that weighs 430 tons, Gee, but also this turbine. All of that weight is supported by a thrust bearing there. And the turbine weighs about 200 plus tons. So we have about 600 tons of rotating equipment in every large turbine. Oh my gosh, so the water comes in this side of the dam, mm -hmm. and then what's the process? So the water's gonna come through what we call wicket gates, mm -hmm. and they're actuated by linear hydraulic motors that, that move these gates, and the gates are like Venetian blinds on end. So they'll regulate the amount of water that flows over the turbine, and then out the draft tube. Now, Jim, what we're looking at up here, that's, that's part of the magnet, that's a coil? So. Sure, that's, a, that's what we call the rotor. And it is. It is a, a, a direct current rotor that has electromagnets on around the peripheral. And each magnet ends up as a North Pole and a South Pole magnet. So you're rebuilding that one or repairing it? Yep, that's being repaired and it's going to go back into Unit 11 this fall. And these are the cutaways. If you have a look down through these cutaways, you can see that is the rotor in action. That's spinning, right? Yeah. Like this is all being cut away so we can see. Right see what's going on about 75 rpm and what's cool is if you look at the if you look at that central pivoting point there and then you have a look down here at the end it looks as if it's going tremendously faster on the outside than it is on the inside which of course is exactly what it's designed right. to do yeah. brilliant <laughs> so here's an opportunity for us to look inside a turbine pit, and you can see the turbine shaft rotating. And then this, Check is, this, out. this is really where we control the amount of water that goes over the turbine using the wicket gates and the operating ring. And our hydraulic system will regulate the amount of water flow on the turbine shaft. Now, the, the actual spindle in the in the center, as you're saying, earlier, that stays at a constant 75 revolutions per minute. That's correct. So if more water is introduced into the system, that spindle still maintains its 75 RPM, but more torque is then pushed onto that, that spindle. So it, that's kind of interesting. You were explaining the big thing in the sky earlier, and that puts it, in, it a lot more into perspective. Because sure. it's hard to get your head around the whole picture. 